So anyway, as they bind his polyps and carry him off, he sings this haunting lament. <clears throat> Once long ago in the shade of a ghouly bush Toast in his blood by the faggot gleam Rested a gander man, a noblin at his woggling iron And stuffing a sheep in the old mill stream Then up come the troopers and hung him by the billabong They twisted his woggle irons one, two, and three. Now his ghost sits and moans as it grunges in his gander can. Old Kama Woglin, his jump back with me. Now I should like to burst for thank you very much. <laughs> There's one friend there, anyway. Uh, Miss Rigby, Stella, my love, would you send in the next auditioner, please? Mr. Spigot, I believe it is. Mr. Spigot, please. Mr. Spigot? Uh, yes, Spigot. Uh, the name, uh, Spigot by name, uh, Spigot by nature. <laughs> oh. Good. Yes. <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> Mr. Spigot, you are auditioning, are you not, for the part of Tarzan? Right. <laughs> now, uh, Mr. Spigot, I couldn't help noticing, uh, almost at once, that uh, you are a one-legged person. You noticed that. <laughs> When you've been in the business as long as I have, uh, <laughs> Mr. Spigot, you get to notice these little things almost instinctively. Now, Mr. Spigot, you, a one-legged man, are applying for the role of Tarzan. Right. A role that traditionally involves the use of a two-legged actor. True. And yet you, a unidexter... <laughs> line for the role. Definitely. A role for which two legs would seem to be the minimum requirement. <laughs> well, Mr. Spigot, need I point out to you where your deficiency lies <laughs> as regards landing the role? Yes, I think you ought to. Uh, need I say with over much emphasis that it is in the leg division <laughs> that you are deficient. <laughs> the leg division. The leg division, Mr the Spigot. The leg division. The leg division. You are deficient in it to the tune of one. <laughs> <laughs> your right leg, I like. I like your right leg. It's a lovely leg for the role. That's what I said when I saw it come in. I said... <laughs> against your right leg. <laughs> the trouble is, neither of you. <laughs> you fall down on your left. You mean it's inadequate? It's inadequate, Mr Spigot, and to my mind, at any rate, the British public is not yet ready <laughs> for the sight of a one-legged eight man swinging through the jungly tendrils. <laughs> Don't despair, Mr. Spigot. After all, you score over a man with no legs at all. I mean, should a legless man come in here demanding the role, I should have no hesitation in saying, get out, run away. So, so there's still a chance? There is 
it's still a very good chance, Mr. Speaker, if we get no two-legged character actors in here within the next 18 months, there is every chance, there is every chance that you, a unidexter, will be the very type of person we shall probably in some way be attempting at some time to contact uh, telephonically. <laughs> I'm sorry I can't be more definite, but you must understand what with all the difficulties the BO process <laughs> The rest of this record is now totally taken up with Monty Python's Flying Circus. see one, and I'm looking at one right now. No, no, he's, uh, he's not dead, he's, he's resting, you know. Remarkable bird, the Norwegian blue, in it, eh? Beautiful plumage. A plumage? Don't enter into it. He's stone dead. No, no, he's, he's resting. All right, then, if he's resting, I'll wake him up. Hello, Mr. Polly Parrot. I've got a nice fresh banana. Here. No, he didn't. You hit the cake. I never. Yes, what you did. Did. Oh, I did. Hello, Polly. Call a dead parrot. He's stunned. <laughs> stunned? Yeah, you stunned him just as he was waking up. <laughs> Norwegian blues stun easily. No, no. Don't play the slippery eel with me. That parrot is definitely deceased. And when I purchased it not half an hour ago, you assured me that its total lack of movement was due to it being tired and shagged out after a long squawk. Well, he's, uh, he's probably pining for the fields. <laughs> pining for the fields? What kind of talk is that? And why did he fall flat on his back the moment I got him home? The Norwegian blue prefers kicking on his back. <laughs> Remarkable bird, isn't it, eh, Major? Beautiful plumage. Look, Tosh, I took the liberty of examining that bird when I got it home, and I discovered that the only reason it had been sitting on its perch in the first place was that it had been nailed there. <laughs> Oh, of course I would nail that. Listen, Mush, if I hadn't nailed that bird down, it would have muscled up with them bars, bent them apart with its little pecker, and boom! Boom? Boom. Mate, this parrot wouldn't boom if you put four million volts through it. He's bleeding demised. No, no. He's not pining, he's, he's passed on. This parrot is no more. He has ceased to be. He's expired and gone to meet his mate car. He's a stiff, 
shuffled off this mortal coil. He's rung down the curtain and joined the bleed inquiry this of you. <laughs> he fucking snuffed it. <laughs> These are the the metabolic processes he's had his lot. All statements to the effect that this parrot is still a going concern are from now on inoperative. This is an ex-parrot. Well. well, I'd better replace it then. You want to get anything done in this country, you've got to go... What's the news? Well, I've had a look around the back, and we're right out of power. I see, I see, I get the picture. I got a slug. <laughs> Does it talk? Yep. Yeah. Right, I'll have that one then. First of the animal songs. Some people think the title of this song is irrelevant. But it's not irrelevant, it's a hippopotamus. A bone hippopotamus was standing one day on the banks of the cool Shalimar. He gazed at the bottom as it peacefully lay by the light of the evening star. Away on a hilltop sat combing her hair his fair hippopotamine maid. The hippopotamus was no ignoramus and sang her this sweet serenade. Mud, mud, glorious mud, nothing quite like it for cooling the blood. So follow me, follow, down to the hollow, and there let us wallow in glorious mud. Hippopotamus he aimed to entice from her seat on that hilltop above. As she hadn't got a ma to give her advice, came tiptoeing down to her love. Like thunder, the forest re echoed the sound of the song that they sang as they met. His enamorata adjusted her garter and lifted her voice in duet in Russian. Follow me, follow. Down to the hollow. That will improve our cultural relations. I wonder now what am I to say of the scene that ensued by the Shalimar side. They dived all at once with an ear-splitting splosh, then rose to the surface again. A regular army of hippopotami, all singing this haunting refrain. That's you! There was a thing on the paper tonight about documentaries, and I've had an idea for a long time for a, what I think is a wonderful documentary, which has everything. For instance, you go to work, you come home at night, and you never really think about it. It's mechanical, it's routine. But there are a group of men who every day 